This video is for section 7.1 about ions. The learning goals are to be able to determine the number of valence electrons in an atom of any representative element and know how cations and anions are formed. Let's take some notes on that first learning goal. Be able to determine the number of valence electrons in an atom for any representative element. The representative elements are the elements in columns 1a, 2a, 3a, 4a, 5a, 6a, and 7a. All of the elements in the center of the periodic table are the transition metals. Those are not the representative elements. And the very last column, group 8a, is the noble gases. Noble gases have a full outer energy level, so noble gases will have eight valence electrons. A valence electron is an electron in the highest principal energy level of an atom. You can determine the number of valence electrons for atoms by using the group number, which is written at the top of the columns. For example, elements in group 1A have one valence electron. Elements in group 2A have two valence electrons, and so on. Here's group 3A. All of the elements in that column have three valence electrons, three electrons in the highest principal energy level. It's possible to draw a diagram that shows the number of valence electrons in an atom for an element. This diagram is called an electron dot structure. For an atom of chlorine, which is in group 7A, therefore it has seven valence electrons, this picture is the electron dot structure. In the center is Cl, that's the symbol for the word chlorine, and surrounding that is seven dots. Each dot represents a valence electron. Another example, an atom of magnesium. Magnesium is in group 2A, so it has two valence electrons. If you want to draw a picture of that atom, you write Mg, and then next to that you put two dots. Now you don't have to put the dots side by side like this. You might have one on the side and one up above. You'll notice in this drawing for chlorine, however, that there aren't three dots on any one side of that symbol. So at most, you would pair up the dots. Observe that there is room for only eight dots when they are paired in the four compass directions. This corresponds to the fact that the valence level of an atom can have at most eight electrons. And that would happen if the S level is full and the P level are full. Remember that S can hold a maximum of two electrons and P can hold a maximum of six electrons. Two plus six makes eight. This is why the highest group number is 8A. Another vocabulary word that's important when we talk about valence electrons is the octet rule. When forming compounds, atoms tend to achieve the electron configuration of a noble gas. That is, atoms that are bonded to other atoms in a compound tend to end up with eight valence electrons. There is one noble gas that doesn't have eight valence electrons. That is helium. Helium has atomic number two. It only has two electrons. Hydrogen is atomic number one. It has one valence electron. If it gains one more valence electron, then it will have two electrons like the noble gas helium. So when hydrogen bonds to other atoms to create a compound, the hydrogen atom will end up with two valence electrons. Here are some check for understanding questions. Please answer the questions in the spots. I'll pause the video for you to do that. And quickly, here are the answers. The electron dot structure for oxygen has a capital O in the middle and six dots around the letter O. I know it's six dots because oxygen is in group 6A. Question number two. How many valence electrons does the sodium atom have to lose to be like neon? Sodium is in group 1A. It has one valence electron. If sodium loses that valence electron, then its electron configuration would be similar to neon. Question three, phosphorus is in group 5A. For it to be like the noble gas argon, phosphorus needs to gain three electrons because five plus three would make eight valence electrons like argon has. The next learning goal is to know how cations and anions are formed. We learned these words in a previous section. 
A cation is a positively charged ion formed when an atom loses one or more valence electrons. An anion is a negatively charged ion formed when an atom gains one or more valence electrons. To make a positive ion, an atom has to lose electrons. If it loses the negative electrons, it'll have more positive protons in the nucleus, and that atom will now have a positive charge. It's called a cation. To make an anion, the atom has to gain electrons. If an atom gains negatively charged electrons, it'll have more negative than positive charge. That atom will now have a negative charge. Cations can have different amounts of positive charge. The group 1A atoms form ions with a positive 1 charge. Atoms from group 2A form ions with a positive 2 charge. Atoms from group 3A form ions with a positive 3 charge. Notice how these positive numbers are written with the plus sign after the number. If you write the plus sign in front of the number, that's going to be okay with me. The reason it's written like this is because writing a positive or negative sign in front of a number actually has a different meaning in chemistry, which we'll see much later in the textbook. Most transition metals, those are the ones from the center of the table, the ones that have a letter B in the group name, can form more than one possible cation. For example, a copper ion could be a positive one charge or a positive two charge, or a lead ion could be a positive two charge or a positive four charge. Notice I said that most transition metals have multiple possibilities for charge. There are some transition metals that do only have one possible charge. Now let's consider the anions, which are created from elements in group 5A, 6A, and 7A. Atoms from group 5A create ions with a negative three charge. Think about why that's true. If the atom's in group 5A, it starts with five valence electrons. How can it make an octet like a noble gas has? If it gains three more, then five plus three makes eight, which is what the word octet means. If the atom gains three electrons, it will become a negative three charge. Atoms from group 6A create negative two charged ions, and group 7A creates negative one charged ions. Some atoms do not form ions. The noble gases do not create ions because they already have a full valence layer. They don't need to gain more electrons to create eight electrons. And they don't need to lose any electrons to create eight electrons. They already have eight electrons in their outer layer. Remember the exception is helium. It has two electrons in its outer layer. Carbon and silicon don't readily form ions. Here's that periodic table again. You have one like this in the back of your book, and students in previous years were asked to take their pencils and write the charges of the ions that go with each column. If that hasn't been done in your textbook, I encourage you to do that. Take your pencil and for group 1A, indicate that the ions will have a positive 1 charge. Group 2A ions will have a positive 2 charge. Group 3A will have positive 3 charge. Remember how we said carbon and silicon don't create ions? So don't put any charge above the group 4A. Group 5A creates ions with a negative 3 charge. Group 6A, a negative 2. Group 7A, a negative 1. Don't put any charge above the noble gases. Now when you use the periodic table in the back of your book, you'll have the charge information that you need this year. Next, let's discuss naming a cation. A cation has the same name as its corresponding atom. Let's consider two examples. There is an element called sodium. It's in group 1A, so it creates a positive cation. That means that the cation will have the same name as the original element, a sodium ion. The symbol for the sodium ion is Na with a positive sign in the corner. Na is the symbol for sodium, and the positive indicates it has a positive one charge. The dot diagram for that ion is Na surrounded by brackets 
with a positive symbol in the corner. The reason this is the dot diagram is because a sodium atom is Na with one dot. To make an ion, it loses that one electron to become a positive one charge. The next example, there is an element called aluminum. Aluminum is in group 3A. Elements from group 3A create positively charged cations. So the name of the ion is the same name as the original element. We would call this an aluminum ion. The symbol is Al with a positive 3 in the corner. And here's the dot diagram picture. Now let's discuss naming an anion. An anion is named using the stem of the corresponding atom followed by the suffix "-ide". So notice that this rule is more complicated than the rule for cations. Let's take a look at two examples. There is an element called oxygen. Oxygen is in group 6A. Oxygen creates an ion by gaining two electrons, and that ion will have a negative two charge. Because this is a negatively charged anion, we need to follow this rule for naming it. The stem or beginning of the word oxygen is ox, and if we put the suffix ide on the end of that, we create the word oxide. So an oxygen atom creates an oxide ion. Here is the dot diagram picture. Notice the letter O in the middle, surrounded by eight dots with a negative two in the upper corner. The reason that that's the answer is because a regular oxygen atom is an O with six dots. Now how does oxygen become an anion? It gains two dots, one here, one here. And when it gains the dots, it has a negative two charge. For the next example, think how an atom of bromine would create an ion. Looking on the periodic table and finding bromine, which is Br, we can see that it's in group 7A. Because it's in group 7A, it will make an anion with a negative one charge. As soon as you decide it's an anion, then to create the name, you take the beginning of the word bromine, which is the brome part, and put the suffix ide on the end. That creates the word bromide. The symbol for a bromide ion is Br with a negative in the corner. And here is the dot structure picture. Here are some check for understanding questions to see if that part of the video made sense. Use your notes on that previous page to answer all of these check for understanding questions. I'll pause the video for you to do this and then we'll discuss them. This concludes the lesson about ions. We discussed how the positive ions and negative ions are formed. We looked at drawings of the ions called dot structure diagrams. And we discussed how to name the ions. Cations end up having the same name as the original atoms, but the anions have names that end with the suffix "-ide".